Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Bayview Christian Center. We appreciate you joining with us, of course, in person and our Facebook Live and YouTube Live uh, crowd. Many, many thousands of people, right? Hallelujah. International ministry? Okay. <laughs> anyway, for, for several weeks now, we have been studying 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We've been going through verse by verse. And um, last time we were together, uh, we finished up concerning the different times that believers and unbelievers alike uh, will be resurrected. And we uh, had, uh, I think, five weeks of that called Every Man in His Own Order. And while there are many varying beliefs concerning the events of the end times and when they will occur and how they will occur and all of that, if you see it different, folks, it's okay. Okay? It is not a heaven or hell issue. So there's no need for everybody to get, you know, in an uproar and arguing with each other over it. Um, even though uh, I saw on Facebook that someone had to come against everything I taught on the last five weeks. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, again, it's not a heaven or hell issue. Jesus is. Amen. So I want to continue our study on 1 Corinthians 15, and I want to pick up this morning in verse 24. Then cometh the end. <laughs> uh, we, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And he that <clears throat> and he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he God is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Uh, we've actually covered these verses in uh, previous lessons, but I wanted to <clears throat> reiterate the fact, um, since we spent so much time on verses 22 and 23, that I wanted to go ahead and pick up with 24 and come down, but I wanted to reiterate this. As Paul has gone to great lengths to explain that there would definitely be a corporal or a bodily resurrection um, and that each man would be raised in their own order, both believer and non-believer, and based on who or what we placed our faith in will determine <laughs> our respective destinations. Okay? It, it's simple. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, right? Don't, and you won't. That's the other half. Okay? So, some will be raised to eternal life in Christ, and others will be raised to eternal damnation. Uh, that's, not, um, um, that's not bad preaching, okay? It's just the truth, all right? So after Paul's lengthy description about these resurrections, he makes this statement that I don't believe many understand, but many have um, made a doctrine out of, <laughs> okay? Um, there are some uh, religions today, okay, who actually... Um, put this into effect today. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29. It says, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Now, many doctrines, as you know, have been, uh, denominations too, have been created out of taking one scripture out of context. You know, you can't, when you read your scripture, read everything around it, the whole chapter, the whole book or whatever, but don't just take one verse and make a doctrine out of it, okay? <clears throat> a friend of mine uh, says they believe in Jesus, but her whole church adheres to the law of Moses. Now, law and grace don't mix, Okay? One or the other, but not both, all right? Which one do you want? So according to their belief, 
They say that Jesus didn't do away with the law. So it still is in effect and it still needs to be followed. Now that's what they say, not what I say. Although Paul stated many, many times that the law was totally fulfilled. Okay? And <clears throat> we, are, we have a new covenant, right? Based on better promises. <laughs> Aren't you glad? So although Paul stated many, many times that it's been fulfilled, especially for the believer, Romans chapter 10 and verse 4 says this. It said, for Christ is what? The end of the law for what? Righteousness to everyone that believeth. Okay? The scripture, everyone that believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Not just whatever you believe. <laughs> All right. So what is the definition of righteousness? Right standing with God. In other words, you have been reconciled. You were separated, just like the song said. And now we have been reconciled to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood. Galatians tells us that the purpose of the law was not to make a religion out of it, not to make a doctrine out of it, but that's what the Jewish uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and such did. But the purpose of it was to bring us to Christ. Okay, So in that respect, yes, it is still in effect. Okay, um, I, I've seen um, different people, um, uh, Ray, I think his name's Ray Comfort or something like that. You know, he goes out and he interviews people and he said, you know, have you ever lied? Have you ever stole anything? Have you ever done this and done that? You know, and a and person says, yes. He said, so you broke the law of God, you know, <laughs> so, and then he tries to lead them to Christ. So Galatians chapter three and verse 11 says this, it is, says now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous live by faith. How are we righteous? By faith, okay? By grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The law, however, is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Now, I think you could take that uh, last half of that verse and say what James said. said, if you're guilty of one, you're what? You're guilty of all of them. But if you're living under the law, you're living under a curse if you continue to read in Galatians. But in my friend's post on the internet... Uh, they worship on Saturday, you know, which is, you know, the Jewish Sabbath and all. And, and they said, if you're worshiping on Sunday, you're doing it wrong. Well, let me ask you this. Is there any day the Lord can't be worshiped? Okay. I, I mean, most of you act better on Sunday than you do the rest of the week. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, so the, uh, we all know that the law is based on works and no amount of work that we do in this flesh will have a spiritual impact, okay? It cannot bring about the new birth when we are born of the Spirit. So we have to have faith through uh, grace in order to believe in Jesus and his completed work. It's done, okay? There's nothing you need to do to work for your salvation. We work because we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works, okay? Not to receive salvation, all right? Um, <clears throat> similarly, the baptism of the dead is a doctrine, like I said, that some apply to their religion today, but it is much like purgatory. You know, uh, there are those denominations that believe in purgatory where someone can pray someone else into heaven after they have died, okay? <clears throat> Even though Jesus told us in the Gospels that there's a great gulf fixed and no one can go from one to the other. Either way, okay? I believe that's Luke 18, somewhere around there. All decisions for Christ, for or against, okay, must be made while we are here on earth, alive in this fleshly body. All right? And the writer of Hebrews said this in uh, chapter 9 and verse 27. It says, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So this is just my opinion, okay? You can agree or disagree, but let's face it. Most people, okay, 
Now, this is going to sound harsh, but it's me, okay? Most people can't pray their way out of a wet paper bag, much less pray somebody else into heaven, okay? The, the relationship with God just isn't there with most of the Christian population, okay? And we saw that Jesus said in the last days that it would be as of the days of Noah. And at an appointed time, God closed the door to the ark, didn't he? And then it began to rain. Well, God is one day going to close the door to salvation. And that is at the second coming of Christ like we learned in previous studies. But in my research on the baptism for the dead, I found that at least a minimum of 40 different viewpoints on the subject, okay? Uh, personally, I think nobody knows except Paul and the guys he was talking to, okay? So, I mean, uh, I, uh, our, the rest of our modern-day opinions are speculative at best, okay? Um, like many, I have an opinion, but who really knows, you know? Yes, I'm going to tell you my opinion. Um, so, if you remember, certain Corinthians in this church had a problem with resurrection. They didn't want to be resurrected uh, because they thought the body was evil and so forth and so on. And so they were teaching others in the church the same thing. No, oh, there's no resurrection. You don't want the resurrection, you know, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so... Their aversion to it was really that they thought they were going to get, you know, they, they thought that the body was evil and that if they were resurrected, they were going to get the same body back. How many of you want that? None of us. Okay, so they were right in that respect, but they were wrong in their assumption that we're going to get the same body back. And they thought that to die, that to get rid of the body brought spiritual enlightenment. Well, let me ask you this. If you're dead, what good is spiritual enlightenment? Okay, who, who, you, who else are you going to enlighten? See, that's a selfish aspect of it, I guess. So, in my opinion, <clears throat> they must have thought that some ritual of baptism after one died would lead to spiritual enlightenment for others or something like that. And <clears throat> just keep in mind that Paul is arguing the fact that no matter how we believe it, there will be a resurrection. Believer and unbeliever alike, okay? And <clears throat> no matter how we believe about end times, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be according to the Word of God. Now, we may not interpret it correctly. We may not understand it all, but it's going to be, okay? I mean, that's just the Word of God. And fortunately, we won't be getting our old bodies back. Believers will be getting a new resurrection body just like the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, it can go for that. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, he can eat and not get fat. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't have to, but, you know, he can. So <clears throat> the only thing that I, that I have a problem with about, you know, the new heaven and new earth is there's no sea. And, you know, I like to fish salt water. So anyway, so. But true believers look forward to the time that we'll be with Jesus, you know? I mean, being here and having a relationship is fine. You know, Paul said it's better, you know, to die is gain. But, you know, for your sake, I got to be here anyhow. So, but it'll be, when we're resurrected, I mean, we'll be totally free from the dictates of the flesh. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm game for that, okay? Um, because the spirit and the flesh are always contrary to one another, always warring with one another, and somebody's going to win depends on who we give in to, whether we yield ourselves to the flesh or whether we yield ourselves to the spirit. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. And... After the manner of men, I have fought with beast in Ephesus. What advantageth it me? Advantage, King James. If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, and tomorrow we die. Okay? So, in other words, if there's no resurrection from the dead, <clears throat> why are we that minister the gospel risking our lives for the sake of the gospel if there's nothing past this world? 
And in his previous writings, Paul had pointed out several times that he was in constant danger in his flesh, <coughs> excuse me, from the enemies of the gospel, and his very life was always on the line. How many understand people tried to kill Paul? Huh? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he gives us a few of these people that he had trouble with. He said, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one, so 39. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, and that's real stoned, okay? Okay. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. One night and a day I was in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils of the heathen, I think that covers everybody, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, no matter where I went, in perils in the sea, and in perils <clears throat> among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, and in cold and nakedness. And besides all of that, those things that are without, in other words, outside of the mind, and in other words, in the flesh, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the churches. He cared about his churches, okay? And the things that were, people would come in after he left and went on to the next church, and they would just try and start trouble. His point is, is this. He says, if this earthly life is all there is, then why would any of? face all of this stuff? Why would we risk losing our life for the sake of the gospel if we have no hope past this life? Okay? Verse 31 again. He said, I protest <clears throat> by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Um, <clears throat> this verse is hard to understand as far as the King James is concerned. The, the Greek word translated protest here is the Greek word in e ni or ne or however the Greek say it, huh? Ne, me, ne. Nah. Sound like a nanny goat. Okay. Anyway, so the the point is, is it means surely or as sure as. Okay. And so verse thirty one from the Amplified makes it a little clearer. Uh, he says, I assure you by the pride which I have in you in your fellowship and union with Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. That is, I face death every day and die to self. Now, many have taken this phrase, I die to self, you know, totally out of context at times and to an extreme. And they have everybody concentrating on their flesh rather than the spirit. Okay. <laughs> And, and I understand what they mean. I mean, you know, uh, what's that Zach Williams song, you know, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me. You know, I understand that, okay? But if you're always concentrating on your flesh, what are you not concentrating on? The Word of God and the Spirit of God, okay? So God wants us to live in the newness of life. <clears throat> and in Galatians chapter 5, I believe it is, it says, you know, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. So how, do we, how are we supposed to live? Not concentrating on our flesh, not trying to die to self all the time, but live in the Spirit, okay? Then you automatically will, or accidentally, will walk holier than you would on purpose, okay? <laughs> so I don't know how else to say that. Anyway, so Paul is saying, um, whatever I have faced for the sake of the gospel, which includes the resurrection, is worth it for your sake or for the sake of those who believe. In other words, if there's no resurrection from the dead, why would I be willing to risk my life and go through all of this stuff I've gone through to preach the gospel? Verse 32. If after the manner of men I fought with beast in Ephesus, what advantage it me, uh, to me if the dead rise not, eat, drink, and for tomorrow we die? Uh, Ephesus, you know, he was um, being opposed by the, uh, those who worship Diana and all of that kind of stuff. And, and um, he's using a, uh, uh, an illustration here where gladiators used to fight in the arena with lions for sport and stuff like that. <clears throat> so he's just, he's just saying that um, he, he's trying to remind them of how he has 
put his own life on the line in that same city when he was there to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he quotes the last part of Isaiah twenty-two thirteen, 13, where it says, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. And, but if you bring back in uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen nineteen, it says, if in this life we have hope in Christ only, we are men most miserable. Why? Because there's no resurrection. There's nothing to look forward to. We just go back to the dust. So basically he's saying we might as well party till we die. Get the most out of every day. But we saw when we, um, uh, in previous lessons when we were looking at the book of life and the book of works that were opened, uh, that should be reason enough for us to disciple Okay, rather than just be a convert and living for ourselves. But this verse is poorly translated. Um, <clears throat> this this fix, that I'm fixing to read. In verse 33, it says, be not deceived. Folks, how do you be not deceived? Know the truth. Okay, know the word of God. Okay. <clears throat> so most translations... Um, this says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Uh, most translations say bad company. So that's what I named today, bad company. I think there's a band out there called Bad Company, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, so bad company or bad companions, okay? Verse 33 from the NIV says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character, okay? Uh, Berean states, do not be misled. I think there's a point here. Don't be misled. Okay. Bad companionship corrupts good morals. And <clears throat> when I first read across this verse, you know, my, my mind went to toxic relationships. Huh? All of us have experienced <laughs> someone who has convinced us to do something that we would not have normally done on our own or changed our mind, um, have another drink or have another pill or come on with us, you know. And folks, <clears throat> they, they use manipulation, okay? They try to make you feel bad or not, you don't fit in, you know, that kind of stuff. They use greed, they use peer pressure, stupidity, or whatever the reason is. It comes down to somebody else is controlling your life other than you, other than Jesus, okay? Uh, many people fall victim to this because they want to fit in. I mean, how many people join a club or a gang or, or whatever because they want to fit in, all right? <clears throat> Others do it because they think they have no choice. Okay? Well, if I don't, they'll do so and so. So what? You know? But I want you to listen to me. No one can make you do anything you do not allow. You don't like to hear that, I know. No one can make you do anything you do not allow. Uh, even the devil, okay? I, I know people get uh, uncomfortable when I make this statement, but the devil can do no more in your life than you allow. Why? Because you have been given authority in Christ. God always makes a way out, okay? So, but what we want to find out here is, <clears throat> so I don't, you know, keep um, meddling in your life, um, so what we want to find out here is who, who are these bad companions that Paul is, you know, referring to here. In context of this chapter, it is those that are saying there's no resurrection. They are preaching another gospel. You remember what Paul said about somebody who preaches another gospel? Let them be accursed. And if that wasn't enough, two, uh, two verses down, he said, if they're preaching another gospel, I don't care if it's an angel, let them be accursed, Okay. So it's important that we understand the Word of God. It's important that we know the truth. And I've told you before, uh, you may or may not understand my statement, but if you watched Home Shopping Club every day, 
you're eventually going to buy something. Okay? I mean, you just can't, you can't help yourself. You're being influenced. Okay? You're being controlled. Okay? They got you. <laughs> All right, so it's the same thing if we hang out with people who oppose the truth. All right? Whether they're a believer or not. Okay? <clears throat> those who hold to the traditions of men instead of the word of God. And this includes those people who say they believe, but <clears throat> they're walking according to their flesh rather than the spirit. And they feel better. They feel better if they can snare you into their sin. Huh? Well, so-and-so did it, too. <laughs> I mean, no, it's not my fault. Yes, it is. You made a decision, okay? So don't allow others to... Wait, the way Mark uh, 24, uh, 424 says it, uh, Jesus said, take heed what you hear, okay? <clears throat> so don't allow yourselves to be misled, no matter how spiritual it sounds. How many... Uh, be careful with whom you associate and whom you listen to, okay? Um, Well-meaning people can even lead you down a wrong path, okay? How many understand that Paul thought he was doing the will of God when he was out persecuting Christians, okay? So well-meaning people can even be in error. And this is why I remind you to read your own Bibles, okay? Don't come here every Sunday for a snack, all right? Read your own Bibles. Uh, ask questions if you don't understand something. But understand this. No one person understands it all. Uh, I mean, we don't have all the answers, you know. Much as I would love to, I don't, okay? That's why I tell you this is my opinion because I don't know. You know, it's just my opinion. But how many of you have heard so-and-so was a good person until they started hanging around with them? Huh? Now, <clears throat> in my younger days, okay, we'll say B.C., before Christ, right? right? We, um, in my younger days, uh, I used to have some friends, and, and we used to hang out all the time. And their mom hated me because before they hung out with me, they were okay, all right? And she hated me so bad that when their dad died, I went to the funeral, and I signed in the funeral book, and she ripped that page out. Okay? So I, I was a wrong influence. Okay? I thought I was wonderful, but she didn't think so. Okay? But it, it, it you know, I mean, I had no intent to lead them one way or the other. You know, I was just, we were just partying, you know, having a good time. So... But anyway, so we've, we've heard, we've all heard, uh, and it may apply to some of us, that, you know, we were good until we started hanging around with so-and-so. And these Corinthians were being misled by people in their own church. Many of you have been in a church like that. Uh -huh. We've all been there. Um, I can't imagine how many church splits there have been because people want to influence it one way or the other, okay? But... Um, <clears throat> the problem that was happening here in the Corinthian church is that some of the um, younger crowd were starting to believe the message of the false teachers, that there was no resurrection, okay? And folks, the gospel includes the resurrection, okay? The resurrection of Christ first, and after that, they that are in Christ, and then after that, we went through all of that. But they were be believing the message that, you know, there is no life after death. So, hey, let's party. And let, I mean, tomorrow we die. Let's have a good time, you know. And um, so some people have reported these things to Paul that of what was going on in the Corinthian church. Um, so he is addressing both the false teachers and those who uh, reported these things to him about this issue. And he is trying to address them both. Uh, folks, <clears throat> People who think wrongly invariably behave wrongly. Huh? Wrong behavior comes from wrong thinking, wrong beliefs, wrong standards, 
and they're, that are contrary to the Word of God, okay? Uh, I heard somebody the other day on talking about the um, uh, perfect will of God and the permissive will of God. Well, he must let me do it. He hadn't struck me dead yet. Eh. <laughs> See, it's impossible uh, for people, some people, to associate with these other type of people without being contaminated <clears throat> by their ideas or their habits or whatever. Um, how many times have you been somewhere at a party or something at somebody's house and, and you say, okay, well, I got to go, you know, got to go to, got to get ready to go to church in the morning. Well, how about let's take some tequila shots before you go, huh? And then one leads to two and two leads to three, you know, this is, y'all, <laughs> okay. <laughs> y'all are, we don't serve it here, all right? All right. <clears throat> Today's communion. It's, it's great juice, all right? <laughs> anyway, so what I'm saying is the, the context implies that the bad company or the bad um, uh, companions were teaching that there was no resurrection from the dead and that bad theology had corrupted some people's good morals that were in the church as well as causing confusion about what the, what the truth was in the Corinthian church. So hoping in the resurrection for us who believe should be a, 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 an incentive to obedience and holiness, okay? I mean, thinking about understanding that Jesus lives in here and he goes everywhere you go. Well, I hope God didn't see that. He did, okay? He was right there with you, buddy. But you let your flesh lead, okay? So just as unbelief is an incentive to disobedience and immorality, okay? And <clears throat> as Paul had just pointed out, if there's no resurrection, we might as well party, eat, drink, have a good time for tomorrow we die, okay? And if death is the end, what difference does it make what we do in this life? <clears throat> How many of you know we all have a job? We are to be about our Father's business. And our Father's business is to witness the kingdom of God. Reconciliation. We've been, we've been made um, ambassadors for the reconciliation of God. But <clears throat> some of the people in the Corinthian church congregation, like many congregations, there's so many different levels of understanding and growth. Okay, And some may have been babies or some that were there, you know, um, didn't have any knowledge and were easily led astray. I mean, when I first became a Christian, uh, I didn't know anything at all. And whatever they told me, I believed it because they were the leaders of the church. Okay. How many of you have been taught something um, in your early Christian life that was not necessarily Bible? Yeah, it was doctrine, it was church doctrine, or it was this opinion, or whatever. But all of us have been there. It sounded spiritual, but it wasn't necessarily Bible. And the bad theology of these false teachers was leading others to bad behavior and sin and stuff. And in Matthew 23, 13, Jesus said it this way, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. In other words, you're preventing them, okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. This is one of the reasons why I think there's levels of heaven or hell. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, that's the third time, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, in other words, get him under your religion or under your denomination, and when he is made, you make him a twofold more child of hell than yourselves. Okay? So that's as, that is precisely the attitude that Paul was facing and found taking root in the Corinthian church at this time. And he has recognize that some of those who 
claim to know the Lord. How many of you know everybody that says, I'm a Christian, ain't a Christian? Huh? And, and the, those who claim to know the Lord has a, had no relationship whatsoever with God and no real knowledge of his word or knew enough of it to twist it so that it would be to their advantage, their, you know, whatever they were trying to accomplish. But this is one reason why Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who what? Does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, hello, puts them into practice, and that means discipleship, okay? Not convert, disciple, all right? That means you follow Christ. Puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. In other words, mental assent is not enough, okay? Saying you believe is not enough. I've heard people say, well, I can say Jesus is Lord. Yeah, but do you really believe from the heart, you know, down inside? So, <clears throat> but as many of you know, this is where 1 Chico 3, 5 comes in, okay? You do what you believe, and the rest is just religious rhetoric. By the way, for our guest, I'm Chico. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why he was exhorting them in 1 Corinthians 15, 13. He said, awake unto righteousness. Awake, in other words, come to the truth, to the realization of the word of God and walk in righteousness and sin not, okay, because they were doing whatever they felt was good. For some have not the knowledge of God. These were those young believers or unbelievers in, that were coming to that church. He said, and I speak this to your shame. You're leading people away from Christ rather than leading them to Christ. Okay? He wanted them to understand the consequences of their wrong thinking and what it could have, uh, how, what kind of impact it could have on themselves and those around them. How many understand, we, we've said it so many times, that sometimes you're the only epistle somebody reads. And people look, people watch, okay? Our lives, our actions should be what leads somebody to Christ, not turn them away from Christ, okay? In other words, we are to be doers of the word of God, Okay? Followers of Christ, disciples, disciplined followers of Christ, okay? Jesus never meant for you to say you believe and not follow, okay? Again, that's fire insurance. That's not discipleship. But these things come, knowing the truth comes from reading, from studying, from meditating on the Word of God, from coming together with other believers and fellowship and study and stuff like that, and the leadings of the Holy Spirit. It's always the Word and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so doing what is right according to the word, not according to what is convenient to our flesh. Am I preaching good? Hallelujah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Everybody say, I love Pastor Chico. Okay. Galatians 5, 7 in, from the Amplified. Uh, Paul ran into this in various places. Okay, he said, you were running the race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying? Obeying the truth. This look, deceptive, there you go, thank you. This deceptive persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom in Christ. We've all been called to freedom in Christ, right? But let not that freedom be an occasion to the flesh. Amen. Okay. A little leaven, a, a slight inclination to error, uh, and a few false teachers leavens the whole batch. In other words, it can ruin a whole church, okay? It perverts the concept of faith and misleads the church, okay? I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will adopt no other view contrary to mine on this matter. In other words, I presented you with the gospel. Resurrection was included in this gospel, so don't get, be misled. But the one who is disturbing you or misleading you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. 
Paul seemed to run into this issue of people changing the word of God to fit their fleshly desires instead of changing their flesh to fit the word of God. How many of you know we're the ones that need to change, not the word, okay? Paul cautioned them that the message of these false teachers was not the gospel that he preached, nor was it from God, okay? But <clears throat> it was just another scheme. Hear me. It's, uh, I know believers, I'm, uh, you understand believers can be influenced by the enemy? Huh? Because the enemy, where does he concentrate on? Our mind. And what you think leads to your actions, okay? So it is another scheme of the enemy, the devil, to rob unbelievers of true salvation. Well, just ask Jesus into your heart and you'll be saved. That's not, to that's not true, okay? Okay. Uh, 200 people and something heard that on that podcast, right? Another thing that it does is it robs believers. It could cause confusion in the church, and it could rob believers of their commitment to the Lord that they had, and you have derailed them now, okay? And it affects their witness for the Lord. And I want to end this message with the warning to you. Verse 33, NIV. Do not be misled, okay? And I want to say it this way. Don't mislead, <laughs> okay? It applies both ways, okay? Bad company corrupts good characters. In other words, watch that others don't influence you in the wrong way. If you said, I'm, I'm, I'm headed home now, and they say, oh, well, let's do so-and-so. Said, I'm headed home now. See ya, okay? Stick to your belief in your faith in Christ. Don't be influenced. And watch that you don't influence others in a wrong way too. You could. And we'll pick up here again next time. Did you learn anything? Oh, the weak one there. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, praise the Lord. We have communion this morning, so if I can get somebody to hand that out while we're signing off online here. I want to thank everybody, of course, for coming in person and our Facebook Live and our YouTube Live broadcast uh, for listening in. Uh, don't forget Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, Todd will be leading us in a Bible study at 7. Um, also today, Sade Savage is where? Volcano Room at 2 p.m., okay? Um, uh, if you would like to support this ministry financially, uh, you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 281-559-6580. And um, um, that's pretty much all I have for you today. God bless you. Amen.